Hello, my name is Chung Ho Kwon. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, we are in the second week of sermon series, Things Bible Never Said. I think it's the first time I'm preaching part of this kind of sermon series. I always talk about what Bible said. So if you are here to hear what Bible said, you're in the wrong place. You might hear from what Bible never said from me today. Uh, this topic for this week is about everything happens for a reason. People often hear or heard this praise to seek comfort. Some of them think the Bible says so. Some others, they don't care too much. Or some of you might think, so what's the matter with you, pastor? I will tell you this. The implication of this notion, everything happens for a reason, is much more important, at least in my life, than I expected. And possibly, it could impact the way we see God and how God works in the world and how we can live as God's people in the world. Honestly, I admit this. I told you before, you know, if you are here to hear what the Bible said, you are in the wrong place. My audience is not people who live in the world of certainty. Everything is under control. God has a plan for everything. They are not my audience. Also, my audience is not those people, whatever, whatever, or I don't care. Instead, this sermon series is for those who don't sure, who live in the world of uncertainty, but seek faith in God, who want to know more about God, who want to know more about Jesus, with all kind of unanswered questions. They are my target audience. They are not the people maybe not in this place, but they are maybe your family or your friends who are out there who lost faith or who lost just a track in their life. First, I want to tell you this. Everything happens for a reason that makes us feel better when life is complicated. The notion is simple and clear answer to the question of why things happen. Why, especially bad things happen. Why my prayers are not answered. Why? It is because there's a reason. God might have a plan, a reason for that. But I don't want to develop a deep argument on this matter that's the job of theologian and also the seminary classroom. Instead, I want to share three stories. You might find uh, you uh, find the story fit you know, yourself, or you can find something better. Hope you find a takeaway from this sermon series. The first story is this: it's a folk tale from China. A story about an old wise man and his son. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, a father and his teenage son lived in China. Their town is located in one of China's vast frontiers. One day, for no apparent reason, their only horse ran away and crossed the border into their enemy's territory. The father gave up tracing the horse, his friends and neighbors were small town. They offered consolation for his bad fortune. But he said, what makes you so sure that this is not a blessing? People didn't understand. A month later, his horse returned, bringing with her a magnificent stallion. This time, everyone in town was full of congratulations for his good fortune but this wise man, the father, said, what makes you so sure this isn't a digester? The man's young son loved horse riding. One day he tried to ride a new horse, the stallion, fell off, broke his hip. He became disabled. Once again, everyone in the town offered their consolation for the, his bad luck. But you might know what his father is going to say. What makes you so sure that this is not a blessing? 
a year later. His son was still dealing with this disability and wounds. Enemy country invaded across the border. Every able-bodied man in the town was required to carry their bow and go into battle. The town lost nine of every ten men who went to the battlefield. The man's son received a military exemption due to his wounds and his disability caused by the accident. So he survived. Since then, everyone in that town, that small town, came to learn that a good fortune or success has often turned out to be a terrible thing. What appears to be a terrible event has often turned out to be rich blessing. This is a very well-known Chinese folk tale I heard so many times when I grew up uh, in, in Korea. And also, I found this story from one of the books we used, actually our study book in Emotionally Healthy uh, Spirituality class. Think about this story. My second story is this. A long time ago, in Missouri, far, far away, a young pastor and his family followed an appointment and moved into a rural town. He had a really great Christian neighbor who was not a member of the church, but this neighbor shared all kinds of produce from his backyard, as well as good friendship, had breakfast together a couple of times a week. The pastor felt so blessed because of this new friend. The neighbor was actually very, not a pastor. He preached sometimes in his church, and he's listening to some, some, uh, his favorite preacher CDs. I don't know, you heard that name, Kenneth Copeland, a well-known televangelist. He carried his own the sermon CDs, and he offered it to his neighbor, and listen to these sermons. It's great. And then he was so disappointed because his pastor friend was not that much passionate to listen to their sermons. One day, there was a tornado warning in town. Fortunately, it didn't directly come to the town. Later, I... Actually, oh, I confess it was I. <laughs> uh, I heard it touched down uh, other areas. In the next day morning, my neighbor told me he prayed aloud in the backyard when storm was approaching. He commanded it to turn around. He believed God listened to his prayer. Tornado didn't come to our town. He believes God controls everything. God orchestrates all the just the worst daily happenings in his life. But I didn't ask him, what about the people hit by the storm and lost everything on the day? Is that because they didn't pray like you in their backyard? Or God has a different plan for them? Everything happens for a reason or just happens. I don't know where you stand. I'm curious what makes you so sure that. Life is a journey. All of us have heard it so many times. A journey involves movement, action, good luck, and terrible events, achievement, roadblocks, detour, stop, pause, stuck, fun, loss, suffering, hiding, falls, rest, breakups, and it should have an end. People feel blessed when things are going well. We believers feel God's blessing is with us. Question is, what if a bad thing happens in life? Is it God's punishment? I'm not just talking about natural disasters, but also loss of health, loss of job, bad accident, poverty, breakup, bankruptcy, war, or death of a child. You might 
think or say to a friend dealing with these bad things, everything happens for a reason. But do you remember the story in Old Testament, that guy named Job and his friends? Job is a guy who got all these things together in his life. Bad thing happened. He lost his children. His wife uh, left him, lost his health, everything. At that time, his friends showed up and had a long conversation. This, this book has 42 chapters. The conversation part is like more than 35 chapters here. What they were talking about is you might do something. You sin something before God. That's why all these bad things happen to your life. I remember one of my professors mentioned that these friends put theology in the place of compassion. In the end of the story, God showed up and talked to uh, these friends and Job, and, and actually God criticized his friends. Here I have my third story. It is another story of mine related to all of us. Last week, I felt everything happened in my life. It was emotionally very colorful, much more than I expected. First, I had a jury service call, so I had to wait until Saturday and make sure I have to show up in the courthouse in the morning or not. You know, it's the privilege of citizen, but it can take away all kinds of your regular schedule and life from you. It was my second call in the last three years since I came to Platt Woods. I asked Pastor E, what's going on here? <laughs> I felt relieved, not disappointed, when I heard that I was not selected as one of jurors. I was able to save my week schedule. Then, in the Sunday afternoon, I was so excited to go to my son's concert. It was a concert with uh, 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 UCM choir and professors and at the Country Club United Methodist Church. On the way to the concert, I got a prayer request email from my son's music teacher. He said one of her former students was wounded by a gunshot, and he's my son, Stephen's age. I was so upset when I heard, when I read this email. This email said the boy rang the bell of the wrong house mistakenly when he went to pick up his younger siblings. He had to show up actually 115 terrace, but he showed up street. And it said the man in the house shot the boy through the storm window. And my son's teacher believes the 16-year-old boy was shot senselessly because of the color of the skin. I think most of you watched it on your new, the news. And my family and I talked about these things uh, rather than uh, concert and music on the way back to home. Where the shooting happened is not too far away from my neighborhood, and I know we have church members who live in that area too. And I walk my dog almost every evening. Sometimes, and this, with this happening, I got some little worried. What if my dog is accidentally released and ch uh, chased a, a rabbit? Can I follow my dog to my neighbor's yard? Before I came to know about this, uh, the shooter, my lawn care guy said, uh, he lives in the same street. He told me how this man was a good neighbor, and he said, he just, uh, his wife just moved to the nursing home. He lives him, there him by himself. There's a lot of disinformation about what happened. I felt sorry for the shooter as well as the boy, Ralph. It was kind of up and down I had in the week. That's not the only thing I had. And I got some plumbing issue. I had to a valve exchange and the plumber showed up and I thought he going to change and exchange the valve and go. And he said, no, you, we have to open your drywall. That was a bomb I had. Oh, I got more. My son had a prom party last night and he's not at home yet. So <laughs> I know where he is uh, and the Live360 shows he's in his friend's house. But 
Hope it went well. <laughs> there are more happenings in the last week of my life. Did God orchestrate everything in my life? For me, for Ralph, for the man who shot Ralph, for my plumber, for my son? I don't believe so. And I don't think that's what the Bible says, how God works in the world either. Things happened. Things always happen. Sometimes things are so trivial, no problems follow that. So we don't care too much about it. We forgot soon, and then we never recall. But there are things which made problem. One small mistake or accident changed our life entirely. Like what happened to the boy. On the night, he just knocked the door of a wrong house, and that happened. Things happen accidentally. Things happen sometimes intentionally because of our own bad choice, intention, or others' bad choice or intention. In those moments, our God is tempted to believe everything happens for a reason. When something bad has happened, we are trying to help someone through actual difficult time. We say, it was meant to be. Or when someone dies unexpectedly, we hear, it must have been their time. Or it was part of the plan. Or it must have been God's will. We seek to console by saying God has a particular purpose for bringing about situations in which people suffer. Some Christians assume that while they don't yet understand why it had to happen, all events in life unfold according to God's predetermined and immutable plan. They strongly believe God controls everything. Everything happens for a reason, or God planned everything. Sounds like a simple, clear answer to the question of why people suffer. And there are Bible verses which it could be read to mean it. But if we extend this theology, this logic, we can get to some very troubling question. Why would God will good people to be suffered? Why would God will a boy, young boy, to be shot? And why would God will millions of people to, be, to die in the Holocaust? If everything happens according to God's plan, it makes God responsible for everyone's actions. It is not what I hear from the Bible. From the first book in the Bible, when God created the world, God created humankind as one to have freedom to make a choice. In New Testament, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. People of faith in the Bible are those who chose God and grew into their true freedom. But when we read the Bible, we read their life stories retrospectively, so we come to think that everything happened to them for a reason. That's how we interpret their lives. And also those people in the Bible, they believe God has a big picture or plan for them. However, each moment of decision-making, when they chose something in their life, they did it. They made a choice in faith, whether it was wrong or right, and then they had to deal with the consequences. God called Abraham to leave his homeland at the age of 75. He chose, he decided to leave his home and embark on a new life journey. God called Moses from burning bush. At the age of 80, he chose to follow a call to liberate his people. God called David uh, to leave comforts of his job as a shepherd. He chose to fight Goliath later to serve as a king of Israel. God called prophet Jeremiah. He chose to stand firm for the values of God and Israel. 
in the midst of a rebellious people. And there are many fishermen in the lake of Galilee. Only several people chose Jesus and followed him. They believed God has a big picture or plan for them, but it didn't diminish importance of their choice, their decision, and their response to God's call. They chose their ways. They responded God's call. I believe the same God has a good intention for you and me too. I believe God has a plan for each of us. God has a purpose. That plan, that purpose, that reason can be revealed when we make a choice, when we decide to follow Jesus, when we practice our faith today in God, and when we respond to God's call. Let me conclude this message. I don't know what you heard from three stories you heard from me today. A pastor defined everything happens for a reason as half-truth. Because, yes, some, sometimes things happen for a reason, but not everything, not every time. When a bad things happen to you, people might tell you, God is writing a better story. I would say, it is you who can write a better story if you are in God. God is not the author of your suffering. We still don't know why suffering happens exactly. They just happen. What the Bible speaks to us is that God will be with us when we even walk a darkest valley in our life. St. Paul believes, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. His confession does mean that God planned all imprisonment and suffering during His mission trips. He believed God was there. God was with Him through all those events that made all things, even suffering, work for good. Everything happens. Things happen in life. God's only reason, plan, or purpose is to be with you. And good news is that God will be with you. And you can write a better story when you choose God. Choose God's love in all circumstances. Then you will see you are God's plan for the world. Let us pray. So my prayer is from Romans chapter 8. In all these things, we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.